Hi, I'm Matt Bomb, and welcome to Bomb Movies and to another mod guide video. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your Skyrim for PC look and play the same as my ultra modded Skyrim seen in my Skyrim Let's Play. So, in the description below is information on how to obtain all the files needed for this, and this video also assumes you're familiar with downloading and extracting archive files, compressed files. Firstly, the computer I'll be installing this on is a home theater PC and has an i7-3770K CPU running at 4.3GHz with 16GB DDR3 RAM, SSDs for the system and game drives, plus a GTX 1060 6GB card to drive the 1080p 42-inch TV it is connected to. I tested the process already on my 4-year-old laptop that has a GTX 765M GPU and it, to my surprise, actually ran at 20-30fps, which I wasn't expecting. Secondly, the archive you will download if you want to has well over 500 mods and modifications for Skyrim. Lots of them have been altered and changed to work with the build, including customizations from myself. However, many are still the original work of the author and by no means do I take any credit for their amazing and hard work. In the same location you will find the archive will be another file listing as many of the mods as possible so please go on over to the nexus and find the mod to endorse and leave a donation. The configuration files included in the archive are optimized for 1920 by 1080 resolution so if you need to change that leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. The minimum specs for this build are an i3 at least running at 3 GHz plus 4GB of RAM, 120GB of additional hard disk space and a 2 or 3 gigabyte graphics card GTX 780 or AMD 7970 or higher. I suggest higher. I think the processor is quite important in this but at least the minimum i3. Okay, this build and install isn't meant to be altered in any way other than in-game configuration and INI files. Changing any of the mods without advanced understanding of what you are doing will break it. Okay, a quick run through of what to expect after install would be greatly improved graphics and effects, highly detailed characters and body physics including realistic lady bits movement, clothing physics too taking advantage of those lady bits, shout overhauls, magic overhauls, combat overhauls, AI overhauls, additional quests, new lands, expanded dialogue, many new NPCs, environmental changes and effects, vampire and werewolf changes, new weapons and armour, player homes and much 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 more. Skyrim will certainly never be the same again and it took me an incredibly long time to get all of this working as well as it does with all the different mods. Right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is download the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and that's a fresh installation of Skyrim so if you've got one already installed please uninstall and reinstall again so everything is anew. Um, I've also downloaded the downloadable content packs, that's all four of them including the high res texture pack you can see there. So Dawnguard, Dragonborn, Hearthfire and Skyrim high resolution texture pack. So you want a fresh installation of Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I'm actually logged onto my downstairs computer in my living room at the moment via VNC and it's running at uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution um, via my 4K PC here. Um, so things are going to look a little bit more laggy than usual because I'm connected via remote viewing software to another computer. We'll see how that goes as the video progresses. So the next thing you're going to want to do is download the Bomb Movies Skyrim Ultra Archive and if you look in the description below there will be instructions on how to do that and I've already downloaded that so we'll have a look in here. This is on my 4K machine. You see you've got the BM Skyrim Ultra Upload Project and it's about 30 gig download and once you've unpacked it it's about 60 gig. I've already unpacked it on this machine which is my downstairs living room machine and in there you will find these six well three folders and three files and they're the ones you're going to need to create your ultra modded Skyrim in the flavor of bomb movies um, so right first of all what you're going to need to do is unpack the archive so you're going to need WinRAR or um, 7-zip to unpack the archive and you unpack it to a space on a hard disk which has got about 60 gig free as said and then once you've done that what you're going to need to do is actually ignore those files and run Skyrim Vanilla. So if you play Skyrim from Steam Launcher, 
And the reason for doing this is you want to create the default INI files and other files that the game creates on first time setup. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so you'll see it's now saying detecting video hardware, the Skyrim will now detect your video hardware and set video options accordingly. So just click OK. It should set it to Ultra. Yep, there we go. Oh, that's uh, Windows game sticking its nose in. Let's just close that. Right, okay. So, video system is set for ultra high quality. Click OK to that. Then go into Options. And then make sure you turn off the anti-aliasing. And the anisotropic filtering. Basically, these will be turned off by using my INI files anyway. But just make sure they're off. You don't need to touch anything else. Everything else is fine. Just click OK. And then you want to click Play. You actually want to get into the game. And that will create the INI files which are going to overwrite later. Now I don't know how this is going to perform because as said I'm using VNC Viewer so probably not going to be quite right and I can already see that it's not. So we're going to have to try and navigate this using the keyboard I think. Yep. Right that's all you need to do is you need to go into Skyrim and then you can quit again. So once you've come out of initially firing up the game, it should have created the uh, default INI files and you can find those under your user directory on your main drive. So the mine will be under the C drive there. Users, documents, my games, Skyrim. Okay, so they're the default files that the game has created. And you're gonna be overwriting those, but you wanted to make the game create them initially. So next thing you need to do is you need to copy from the extracted archive from here you need to copy this directory steam apps which has got the following files and folders in it and this Skyrim directory there you want to copy that entire directory to your main game directory your main Skyrim game directory and when I installed it I installed it to my C drive on this machine which is the default so it would be C program files x86 steam and then there you'll see Steam Apps. Now I'm going to paste directly into this folder and it'll ask to overwrite. It's probably going to take some time to do it. It's actually coming off a USB 3 external drive and pasting into an SSD. So basically what you want to do is you want to overwrite all files. So let that copy across and when prompted overwrite all files. Basically merge it with that directory. That's exactly what you want it to do. Okay, so that might take some time to copy across, but once finished, we need to go over to the next stage. So you go back to where you extracted your original files from the archive. Okay, so we've just copied the Steam apps directory over to your main Steam directory, and that's put most of the files in place that you will need. The next step is to copy the app data directory here. So if you just right click on app data, click copy, and that needs to go into your C drive, into your users directory, under your user that you're logged on as at the time. And then you need to paste it in here. You might not actually see the app data directory because it's a hidden directory. If you click view at the top there, you can click this checkbox. This is under Windows 10. You can click this uh, checkbox here to show hidden items. And there it is. So basically right click anywhere and click paste and you want to repa replace the files in the destination so replace those files and that actually won't take that long as you can see because there's only a few text files in there and basically what you've just pasted in there is the uh, the load order lists so that basically tells Skyrim um, the mods you want to load and in what order you want to load them that's quite important so now go back to where you've extracted the main archive files mine being on an external drive okay and the next thing you want to do is you want to copy the documents folder actually it's probably better don't copy the whole documents folder just go straight down into my games and copy my games folder so then right click copy that folder and go into your user account again and documents and there you see my games and you can paste there and replace the files in the destination and that is basically pasting the INI files your Skyrim INI and your Skyrim Press INI files. These two over the top. 
and it's also putting a few other files in there too like the SKSE and Skyproc and a few other bits and pieces but it's only overwriting those two INI files which you created when you first ran the game. Okay so that's basically the initial configuration where the initial copying done. We're nearly ready to fire up the game for the first time and how you need to do that is you need to go to where the game directory is so mine is under C program files x86 then into Steam Steam apps common Skyrim and then in there you'll find a file file called skc underscore loader.exe and if you right click that file click send to desktop to create a shortcut I can minimize Steam there and there we go there is the skc loader exe now right click on that and rename it I'm going to rename mine Ultra Skyrim Okay, I'm actually going to give it an icon too and how you do that is you right click, click properties and then you've got under shortcut change icon. Okay, and I'm going to click browse. I'm going to point to the Skyrim directory and I'm going to use the Skyrim icon. The program files Steam, the maps, common, Skyrim and then there you'll find Skyrim icon click open OK apply OK so that's actually got the correct icon on it I added a shortcut to the vanilla on there earlier I'm actually going to rename that as it won't be vanilla anyway but that's the vanilla shortcut so I'm just going to rename it vanilla right I know I need to fire up the game using the ultra underscore Skyrim shortcut OK and that's basically it the pr trouble is there are certain issues with the mods that I've used that means you have to alter but it's actually one particular mod and that is the video mod. You actually have to alter certain files after you've met video for the first time. So basically let's fire up the game. I've got no idea how this is going to work via VNC viewer. It might not work very well at all but we're going to try anyway. Let's have a look. Let's fire this up. It's going to take a long time initially to load because it's loading an awful lot of mods the first time it loads. Actually, every time it loads, it will it'll take a while to fire up. You might not think it's actually running, but if you sit there and wait, eventually it will actually come up. You can see the uh, little, well, it's actually disappeared, but you can see the spinning circle there for a second. But I can guarantee you it is running. If we bring up Task Manager, you will see... You'll see the EMB host. Ah, oh, there we go. There's the, the window. So it didn't take that long. But it does take quite a while. And this will load the ultra modded Skyrim. As I said though, there is an issue. It's not a massive issue. It's just uh, to give you the ultra modded appearance of Vilya. You have to meet her first. And then save the game. Come out of the game. And uh, copy a couple more files across. And that will give you the, the uh, breast physics. And the proper custom body which of course you will want for Vilia, obviously right so from this page here we want to create a new game so I'm going to use the keyboard you make sure I'm actually on the game there we go I want to click new start a new game now this is going to look absolutely terrible because as I've said I'm running it via VNC viewer but I will copy some footage of it running from this machine Okay, so it's probably going to take quite a while to load and it should load alternative there we go and you can see the mods have already kicked in because this is the alternative start mod right but as you can also see it's running really badly because that's running in VNC viewer which is a remote desktop application so I'm not connect I'm not actually on this machine it's my machine downstairs which is why it's running like that which is terrible but we want to basically say we're done here Okay, finish and name your character. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that's actually going to work. Can I hit enter for okay there? I don't think I can. Right, I am going to have to move over to the machine downstairs and try and copy the footage directly from that machine to take you through the next steps. 
Okay, so here we are on the computer downstairs in my living room, my home theatre PC, and I've just double clicked on the Ultra Skyrim uh, shortcut that we created earlier. So I'm waiting for Skyrim to power up, power up, to boot up, load up, fire up. Here we go. But it does take a long time to actually initially load because it's loading all the mods, loading all those lovely files. Okay, so from here, we need to start a new game, as I did previously. And you'll see that when you start a new game, it'll go into the alternative start mod. And I'm actually commentating over the top of this video uh, footage because I didn't have a mic connected to the machine downstairs, which was the whole reason for me doing it via this PC in the first place. So I'm going to commentate over the top of this video footage. So straight away you're in the alternative start mod, live another life. And I'm just going to finish that character, not change anything. Right, and you will see in the top left the huge amount of mods that will load. First you've got the archery gameplay overhaul mod straight away come up in front of you. And you have lots of other quests that will start up and lots of other mods that are loading. So basically there's an awful lot of stuff that you need to configure via the MCM once it's all loaded up and you can spend several hours actually configuring it all and get everything to your liking. But what I suggest you do is actually play the game um, for a little while and configure things as you go and it won't be so laborious. But yeah I mean I've sat there for hours configuring and tinkering and changing things and making it to my liking and changing things for the Let's Play videos. But yeah, as you can see, absolutely loads and loads of mods. So it does take quite some time. And I suggest you actually go off and make a cup of tea or pour yourself a beer or something and then come back in five minutes and just let all these things load. And then you can go into the MCM menu. Okay, so once every mod has uh, basically fired up within the game... You can then actually go into the MCM menu, which is what I do in a second. And you'll see the uh, number of mods that have actually got an MCM menu. Obviously, there are lots of other mods that don't have a menu system because they don't need one. But there is an awful lot of mods here you can see that do have a menu system. And ideally, you need to go through each individual one of these and configure it to your liking. Some of them you can turn off outright. But um, you won't be getting the full experience if you do. There's an awful lot of mods in there. Some are really cool. Well, most of them are really cool. Hats off to the authors. Some I've had to um, customise to make work properly. And basically, once you've done all of that, you'll be ready to play. And right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip using the alternative uh, start mod. I'm going to skip and go straight to a local inn. But what I suggest you do is do whatever you want. And when you meet Vilja in the Bannered Mare, which is where I'm going to go now, after you meet Vilja, you need to do a couple more steps to finish the install. So you meet Vilja, you accept her quest, and then you do a couple more steps. So I'm going to go straight to... I'm just looking at the depth of field there. Just need to go straight to the Bannered Mare. Well, I'm going straight to the Bannered Mare here to show you why... You need to do the extra configuration steps. It shouldn't take that long to load into the Bannered Mare. Okay, so we've started in the inn room. And there you go. Live another life has started. Begin your new life. Right. So down there is Vilia. And you should already be able to see the, um, the changes in the graphical effects and everything else. It is, it is very cool. I am proud of my build. It did take an incredibly long time to get working. Not that it's perfect. Not that it's perfect. I'm not going to say it's perfect because it isn't. But it's pretty good. Right, and here is Vilia. And you'll be able to see, you can still see at the moment, you can see her face is a completely different colour to her body. And basically what you've got to do is you've just got to do her quest, accept her quest. I'm going to skip through these lines of uh, dialogue. And once I've gone through the lines of dialogue, I'll accept her quest. And then we'll go through the final steps you need to do to install my ultra-modded Skyrim build. 
which doesn't take very long. There's only uh, a couple more files you need to copy and overwrite. Okay, so I've now accepted the quest from Vilia. She does like to talk. Right, now you can see this a bit better now. You can see the, the uh, neck seam there is really prominent on Vilia. So you've got a dark face and um, the other colour to her body. Because right, her, her body is basically not custom at the moment. But it is custom, but it's not correct. And what you need to do is you need to follow the last few steps to make it so her face and her body match. She is quite custom there, but not as I would like it. So, we need to exit out of the game, which I believe I do any second, and then we need to do the last few file changes. Um, as I said at the beginning, you can't really change much with this build because of how it's installed. And if you do muck about with the mods, you'll end up just breaking the game and it won't load. So I'm quitting to desktop there. So, now what you need to do is you need to go into Explorer. You need to go into where the extracted files are. And you'll find three files on their own. I'm just remembering where I put them. They're in Tosh, which is an external drive. In the extracted folder location, you've got those three files there. DLC list.txt, loadorder.txt, and plugins.txt. So you need to copy those three files. And I'm actually doing it using a uh, wireless keyboard with a trackpad. And I'm holding down control and clicking on each one. They need to copy those three files. And those three files go into your users directory under your profile. And then in app data, local, into Skyrim. And then you just paste it in there and overwrite. And that puts a different load list with another mod in it. And then what you need to do is you need to go to the Skyrim game directory into the data directory in the main Skyrim directory. So back to the C drive, program files x86. Into Steam. Steam apps. Common. Skyrim. Data. And then you need to find a mod which I believe begins with EM. I had to think there when I was doing this uh, in my living room. What was the mod called again? <laughs> I actually left my notes upstairs and I didn't want to come up and get them anyway. I've, I clicked and remembered. Oh yeah, it starts with EM. That's it. And you'll see there is the one that says EM comp Vilia Skyrim body patch dot ESP dot before. And what you need to do is you need to get rid of the dot before. So you need to right click and then rename and then delete the entire word before and the dot after the ESP and then hit enter and say yes to the prompt and that's it and that has basically enabled that ESP mod file and the other files you in um, overwrit slightly earlier will enable that mod. Now if you go back into the game of course I saved the game before exiting earlier so when I go back into the game and click continue it will pick up right in front of Vilia and you'll be able to see the changes instantly after it boots up which uh, does take a little while as I've said numerous times now because it's loading all of those mods We're loading everything there this isn't a bad machine here it is quite a quick machine I mean, it's overclocked to 4.3 on the processor it's running a 1066 gig ETX not that you'd need that to run this, because you won't. But I'll be interested to uh, to see the, the lower specs, uh, anyone who installs this. I'd like to know your experience of lower spec machines, because I put this on my laptop, my uh, lowly 765M GPU laptop, and it actually ran at 20 to 30 frames, like I said previously. And I was surprised, like I said previously. Okay, so we're going back into the Bannered Mare to look at Vilia, and there you go! No more prominent neck seam, although if you look really hard you can still see a slight seam, although it's barely noticeable. And we've got all those lovely physics you can see as she walks towards us. Which is superb. And believe it or not, that took an awful long time to get all the clothes working with those physics. Because if you just do the body physics, then you just get the body with the physics. But you have to get all the other models working with the physics as well, which took me an incredibly long time getting all that fixed and working. So all the women you see, 
have got the appropriate bouncy bits and the appropriate clothing. But if they're wearing like a breastplate, like a steel breastplate, it won't do that. And that's what I wanted to try and get right. I wanted to try and make it sort of realistic, sort of. Okay, it's going to be joking around a bit because it's loading bits and pieces, but it shouldn't be too bad. And you'll see all the uh, other mods. You should better see quite a few straight away. Texture mods, character mods, depth of field, all the different changes there. In White Run, there's an awful lot. The holder there. And you would have seen most of this in my Let's Play if you've been watching my Let's Play. But it's overcast at the moment, so the shadows and things aren't very prominent because of the weather. As you can see. But that is basically it. So after you've done that last step with Vilia, you're ready to continue your game. And you will enjoy. You've even got the distant windmills there. You can actually see their sails and they're moving. Like I said, it's not perfect. You will get a bit of shimmering off some textures sometimes. Um, which is the Zed fighting. In the distance you can see their shields of the uh, the guards down there. I've just opened up the ENB to look at the FPS counter. I'm actually capping it at 58. Those so pretty much caps, but if I move my head around it does drop. And that, believe it or not, is the processor that causes that. It's the uh, CPU cycles that causes that, not actually the graphics card. And um, that's what I've noticed with my testing. So I had two 980s in, in my main PC and I went over to two 1080s hoping that I might get an FPS boost and it made absolutely no difference. And that's the CPU bottleneck basically. There's far too much going on in the CPU because of all the mods and the scripting engine that Skyrim's got. But it's it's pretty damn stable. Um, yeah, it has crashed the desktop once or twice but it is pretty damn stable. All you've got to do is make sure you save often. Um, it doesn't happen that often. And basically, enjoy the game. Okay, so as you can see, the install and configuration process is relatively painless. However, configuring everything in-game via the MCM system will take you some time. You will also run out of hotkeys quickly too. If you have any issues, leave a message down below and I'll try my best to help you out. And I hope you enjoyed my ultra modded Skyrim build and this video. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Plus, of course, I will also see you all a little bit later on.